One of the best ways that you can utilize bodybuilding to improve your sports performance or your athletic performance is through improving recovery. And oftentimes athletes forget that when we do higher rep sets or when we're under tension for longer periods of time, we can actually bring in metabolites to help our body heal. We can bring in extra blood flow to improve our tendon strength, our ligament strength, which in turn is going to enhance the structural integrity of various joints. But that goes back to improving overall recovery. If we look at bodybuilding and bodybuilding exercises as a simple way to finish off a workout or as a means or a modality that we can utilize when we're a little bit beat up from some heavier lifting or from some explosive work, now we can take that step and analyze actual resistance training through means of recovery. And that's one aspect that a lot of coaches don't touch on when they're addressing how bodybuilding can improve sports performance. I think that's one of those big key factors is that a lot of coaches try to shy away from bodybuilding. Everybody thinks about bodybuilders as these big hulking individuals, but we've got to understand what is bodybuilding? It's simply trying to improve our musculature, typically done through sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. And we're gonna go into five more key aspects on how bodybuilding can improve your sports performance. And we're gonna start right now. What's up everybody, it's Dane Miller from Garage Strength. And if this is your first time to the channel and you're interested in learning more about sports performance, you wanna become a better athlete, you wanna become an explosive freak, make sure that you like, you subscribe, and you ring that notification bell so we can help you become a champion. So another key factor that bodybuilding can do for sports performance is actually enhance our strength endurance. So think about if we're in a sport like wrestling or a sport like football, if we're doing longer sets, we're under tension for longer periods of time. And that's one of the typical aspects behind bodybuilding. We might do one to three sets of five to seven reps, but then we might sit there and say, hey, we gotta get a lot of volume and we've got to stimulate our sarcoplasm so that we can bring extra fluid into our cells to get that mass, to increase our muscle mass. And that's where that strength endurance comes in because we might have to do three to four sets of 17 to 20 reps. Now all of a sudden we're starting to get that big time pump, right? We're starting to feel a little bit bigger, but that's where strength endurance comes into play. When we're hitting those sets of 15 to 20 reps, now all of a sudden our strength endurance starts to take off at higher rates. So if we're a shot putter or, or a football player, let's say, hey, how can we bench press 225 for 20 to 30 reps? We've gotta do some serious bodybuilding work. And when that strength endurance starts to take off, it's also going to have a positive impact on recovery because we're gonna have a higher rate of general physical preparedness. We're also going to be able to do more reps at a higher weight later on because of the adaptations that we are looking for. And I think it's also important to recognize that when we're talking about strength endurance and in recovery with bodybuilding, this isn't an all or nothing factor. We're not saying do just bodybuilding for sports performance. We wanna train just like Jay Cutler to become these freak athletes. It's not an all or nothing. Instead, it's taking principles and ideas and exercises from the realm of bodybuilding and then applying it directly to our sports performance training. Another key factor that bodybuilding can dramatically improve is our mentality. Anyone who's ever done a traditional bodybuilding workout knows that it is one of the most challenging things that you can do from a mental perspective. It's essentially training your body to be as uncomfortable as possible for a long period of time. And that leads to that classic quote where it's, learn how to be comfortable with discomfort. If we can learn how to be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation, now all of a sudden we can really trigger some serious adaptations from our body. But that also comes down to mentality. When we start to grind and push over long periods of time under tension, let's say we're doing a set of lunges. We've got a barbell on our back. We're gonna do a set of walking lunges. We wanna try and open up our hips. We wanna improve our posterior chain. We wanna do walking lunges for, let's say 15 steps on each leg. And then we're gonna take a rest for 15 to 20 seconds. Then we're gonna do that again. And it's just gonna be this long period of a cluster set that's geared towards hypertrophy, 
Now, that starts to play with your mindset. It starts to show you how challenging bodybuilding can be from that mental perspective. And that's gonna come out later in the fourth quarter if you're playing a team sport, or in the third period if you're in ice hockey, or if you're talking about you know late in the match as a wrestler, that mentality, that ability to continue to push and grind will come out in that sports performance. So not only is it gonna help with recovery and your strength endurance, it's gonna help with that mental aspect. And another way that it can actually improve your mental aspect is there's points in training where training can be very boring, it can be mundane. But when you start to factor in you know, some bicep exercises or some tricep exercises, and you're talking about you're a power-based sport, you're a strength athlete, right? But you wanna finish out that workout, you just wanna get a pump in your triceps, you wanna get a pump in your biceps just so you feel a little bit better leaving the gym. These are exercises that you don't have to spend a lot of energy to coordinate and actually execute. They're movements that instead, you can sort of just go in, zone out, and get those reps in. Whereas when you're doing more standard lifts like the Olympic lifts, like strength movements, you have to really, really focus to coordinate very effectively. But it's another aspect where, from a mental perspective, we can either really, really challenge ourselves to dig as deep as we possibly can, deep into our soul to continue to push, or we can also use it if we wanna escape that mundane training and try to actually alleviate some of that mental stress. Another key factor that bodybuilding can do for sports performance is it can really narrow in and help you isolate muscles that are struggling, that are lagging, that are causing issues with your structural integrity. So a lot of coaches will sit here, they see isolation and they're like, oh my God, we can't isolate muscles. That's the worst thing ever. We're sitting on machines and we're just isolating. But again, we have to think about it as not this all or nothing aspect. We've got to utilize some aspects of isolation. It's important. When we're getting into a typical traditional program that we utilize, we're gonna do some serious big lifts. We're gonna do some really high rate of coordination movements. We're gonna do some really heavy strength movements. If I've got a, a thrower who has an issue in his pec, well, we can do some isolation movements to try and strengthen just his pec. If we have a wrestler who tends to peter out later in a match, their legs get tired, their lats get tired, their biceps get really tired, they don't have grip strength later on in a match, now we can start to isolate just their forearms or just their biceps with a large amount of volume and a large amount of strength endurance, and that isolation is going to improve that performance later on in the match. It's the same thing too if we're talking about swimmers. If we have a swimmer who has shoulder issues, we can isolate that joint with something like dumbbell external rotations, and that's gonna transfer really, really well to the pool because now all of a sudden that joint's gonna get a little bit stronger, they can do more eccentric work in their shoulders, and that's going to improve the power output that they want to see with their stroke. And so isolation is not a negative aspect. It's a very important tool that you can utilize and it's something that we can take from bodybuilding to dramatically improve your sports performance. So when you're training for sports performance, if you struggle to pack on a lot of mass, if you struggle to utilize the concepts of bodybuilding to increase size, to improve strength endurance, to improve joint integrity, head over to GarageStrength.com. You can click on the link down below and you can pick up our Mass Builder program, which is a program that we've designed to help increase your muscle mass, improve your strength endurance, improve your recovery so that you can dramatically improve and enhance your strength related to whatever sport that you're training for. Our final key factor, and this is what bodybuilding is all about, is hypertrophy. And I think that a lot of athletes and a lot of coaches have shied away from hypertrophy. They've gotten away from it because bodybuilding has this negative stigma. Everybody's like, oh, I don't wanna get big and bulky. I don't wanna look like Joe Thomas. I don't wanna have a 34 inch vertical when I weigh 315 pounds. I don't wanna look like Sam Mattis, who's 270 pounds and can clean 200 plus kilos. That's actually what people think, but they think about these big and bulky individuals 
and they don't take that step back and they don't look at the actual issue from a top down view. They're not looking at it like, hey, maybe muscle hypertrophy is not that bad. One of the key concepts is generally speaking, the size of a muscle can really predict the amount of force and power that muscle can put out. Let's think about men versus women. Men typically tend to be more explosive they are stronger. You can look at it from a sprinting perspective. Men come out of the blocks almost exactly at 45 degrees. Women come out a little bit above 45 degrees because they don't have as much power out of the blocks. Same thing if we're talking about Olympic weightlifting. Typically, the same weight class individuals on the same level, the men are going to be a lot stronger because they have more muscle mass. Hypertrophy is not always a negative. Yes, there's points of diminishing returns, but when we're talking about utilizing a very effective program, if we're doing explosive work, if we're doing high rates of coordination, if we're doing really important relative strength work, bodybuilding can also be pieced into this puzzle to increase muscle mass so that that other work becomes more effective. And that's very, very important. It's a really important and integral concept for a lot of people to understand is that hypertrophy of specific muscles can really, really help the power output of those muscles, especially if we're working through myofibrillar hypertrophy and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, and we're trying to stimulate satellite cell recruitment to continue to heal those specific areas and make them stronger. So utilize bodybuilding for sports performance, understand these five key concepts so that you can have a greater grasp on overall programming and strength training, and that's gonna help you get to the top of your game. If you want help with programming and strength training, head over to garagestrength.com and we can, can design a custom strength training program for you, or you can pick up our Mass Builder program today. If you want more information about bodybuilding, you can click on this card right here. Until next time, guys, peace.